about your own self, your own history, things that you wouldn't really, them wouldn't teach you in a school, you understand? Because them wouldn't tell you that Rastafara is God, you know what I mean? And yet the Bible will tell you that within 2,000 years Christ shall return and when he returns, he's going to be king of kings, laws of laws, conquering the line of the tribe of Judah, through the line of King Solomon and King David. Now that is the reality of the whole truth and the truth is that his majesty is earth rightful ruler. And that is the Christ. And that is Eilis Selassie I the first. Rising from the proliferation of Ethiopianism and Pan-Africanism, Rastafarianism took its roots in Jamaica following the coronation of Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie I in 1930, a spiritual movement based on the belief in Selassie's divinity. Its followers congregated around preachers like Leonard Howell, who founded the first prominent Rastafarian community in 1940. Additional branches surfaced by the 1950s, and within two decades, the movement had earned global attention thanks to the music of devoted Rastafarian, Bob Marley. Although the deaths of Selassie in 1975 and Marley in 1981 took away its most influential figures, Rastafarianism endures through followings in the United States, England, Africa, and the Caribbean. The roots of Rastafarianism can be traced to the 18th century when Ethiopianism and other movements that emphasize and idealize Africa began to take hold among black slaves in the Americas. For those who had been converted to Christianity, the Bible offered hope through such passages as Psalms 68 and 31, foretelling of how princes shall come out of Egypt and Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. This ethos was strengthened through the late 19th century rise of modern Pan-African movement and particularly the teachings of Jamaican-born Marcus Garvey who reportedly told his followers to look to Africa where a black king shall be crowned. He shall be the Redeemer. Additionally, the 1920s brought such influential pro-Rastafarian texts as the Holy Pipe and the Royal Parchment Scroll of Black Supremacy to Jamaica. Rastafari comes from His Majesty, Emperor Selassie. He was Rastafari before he was crowned Emperor Selassie. Emperor Selassie is his coronation name. We who saw him as a biblical fulfillment became known as Rastafarians. We are his sons and he is Rastafari and we are Rastafarians. By thee shall all barriers be broken. In Jamaica, we always worship a white Christ and a white king and a white queen. They didn't learn us anything of a black king. So when I saw a photograph of a black king in the front page of the Daily Gleaner, I said to my father, I never know we have a black king. He said, yes, man. I said, how oh, you know? He said, he was crowned 1930 in Ethiopia. 52 nations went to his coronation. I said, then how can I know about it? He said, read your Bible. They that grow in death shall reap in joy. Marcus Garvey was a Jamaican-born black nationalist and leader of the Pan-Africanism movement which sought to unify and connect people of African descent worldwide. In the United States, he was a noted civil rights activist who founded the Negro World Newspaper, a shipping company called the Black Star Line and the Universal Negro Improvement Association, or UNIA, a fraternal organization of black nationalists. As a group, they advocated for separate but equal status for person of African ancestry. And such they sought to establish independent black states around the world, notably in Liberia on the west coast of Africa. Oh my God. Ones would say 
it was Marcus Garvey who had announced, look to Africa, a black king will be crowned. So he was the prophet who made that declaration. But historically, it was not Marcus Garvey. He just repeated the words from Reverend Webb, the Baptist from America. So Marcus got that credit. But when we research and read and read, we find say, hey, he's not Marcus, Reverend Webb. But why we say more Howell? Because Marcus Garvey and Howell was in US in Harlem. Marcus was deported to Jamaica and also Leonard Howell. So when Leonard Howell sight of Rastafari, he wanted to be on Marcus Garvey's platform to announce his majesty. Marcus Garvey said, no, I am a Christian. You go somewhere else. And from that, that make a serious uh, line on how, how he tried. So he hit the street with Eilis Selassie as God and King. Marcus Garvey was not in that Eilis Selassie divinity. And we learned, so, Due to how, how he was persecuted for Rastafari and not Marcus Garvey, how he was sent to the asylum, how he was sent to prison, how he was beaten. So we can't give Marcus Garvey that credit historically, no. Having done the research, he said no. Leonard Percival Howell was born June 16, 1898, and he died February 25th, 1981. He was also known as the Gong. He was a Jamaican religious figure. Howell was born into an Anglican family. He was one of the first preachers of the Rastafari movement, along with Joseph Hibbert, Archibald Dunkley, and Robert Hines. At an early age, he migrated to the United States, where he joined Marcus Garvey's Universal Negro Improvement Association. Soon, Howell became one of Garvey's top brass members, but Garvey and the UNIA were constantly under the radar of U.S. authorities, which eventually arrested and charged Garvey for various crimes. Garvey was deported in 1928, and Howell was to follow him in 1932. But soon, Howell's activism switched from Garveyism to one that focused on the importance of Haile Selassie I. He saw Selassie as the great black messiah and he established the King of Kings mission out of respect for Selassie. And he appointed himself Selassie's representative in Jamaica. He also wrote the book about Rastafarian it's called the promise key. Howell was preaching doctrines that were considered by the authorities as anti-church and anti-government. He was charged and sent to prison for sedition, but imprisonment did not shake the foundation of Howell's belief. Upon his release from prison in 1940, he set up the first Rastafarian village in Jamaica on 400 acres this settlement was called the pinnacle because of its high hilltop elevation and the residents became self-sufficient farmers. Howard's influence spread outside of the pinnacle and Rastafarian communities were set up across the country. The original roster camps were also regarded, raided, and dislocated by the police. Leonard Howell is the mind who is the father of the faith, who declared the divinity of his majesty and, and stood by it and not Marcus Garvey. How will live it, you know? Marcus Garvey was announced. Marcus Garvey says that in the time of Mussolini invasion, Marcus Garvey says that Haile Selassie is a coward. It is in the Black Man magazine. And he said, Iris Lassa is not royal blood. And those who illuminate Marcus Garvey, for those who are students of Leonard Howell and Rastafari, we know as fact. Oh, we love Marcus Garvey, same way. On November the 2nd, 1930, 
Rastafari Makanin was crowned Emperor Haile Selassie I of Ethiopia believed to be a descendant of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba Selassie assumed the titles of King of Kings Lord of Lords and the conquering Lion of the tribe of Judah to some fulfilling the biblical prophecy of a black king that had been emphasized by Garvey. Jamaican preachers began promoting the ruling authority of Selassie over King George. Jamaica was then a colony of England and by the mid 1930s the Ethiopian emperor was regarded by followers as the living embodiment of God. Speech in early 1900s said Look to Africa, where a black king shall be crowned. He shall be your redeemer. That one statement became the foundation of the spiritual movement, a way of life we now know as Rastafari. On the 2nd of November, 1930, a governor of Harar named Rastafari Makonin was crowned King of Kings the new emperor of Ethiopia. Upon being crowned king, he took as his regional name, Haile Selassie I. Haile meaning power of and Selassie meaning trinity. Haile Selassie translates to power of the trinity. Haile Selassie's full title as emperor was by the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, his imperial majesty Haile Selassie I, king of kings of Ethiopia, elect of God. The news of a new black African king traveled to Jamaica where word began to spread that Garvey's prophecy had come true. Bertin Rastafari, which is a combination Selassie's previous title, Ras, and first name, Tafari. Rastafarian groups began developing across Jamaica, growing daily. By the 1950s, groups of Rastafarians were gathering on shores across Jamaica to board ships back to Africa. I mean, right now, you see, you are in the 12th tribe of Israel headquarter, mm -hmm. and this is the people who was repatriated from Jamaica like 1956 years ago. And now they came and they strong, they strengthened this 12th tribe of Israel so the people can repatriate from Jamaica mm -hmm. and come and show the righteousness what they are here for, you know, because this was a gift land to the people who was taken here from Africa. And no. uh, the Emperor Selassie had something to do with this, right? Yeah, His Imperial Majesty, this is the gift land of His Imperial Majesty. Uh -huh. Haile Selassie has gave this land to those people, you know. Uh -huh. And these people really, they believe in His, his Imperial Majesty, Emperor Selassie, as fully God and King, you know. Yeah. You see what I mean? They believe him because he, they say that Haile Selassie is our God and King. We ain't got no God, we ain't got no Kings unless his imperial majesty emperor Haile Selassie you know because Jesus Christ has came here uh -huh. to crucify and they crucified him but Haile, but he's going to come as a comforter but not to crucify anymore but as a conquering lion of the tribe of Judah mm -hmm. you see what I mean that's how he's coming again you see what I mean so they see his, his, majesty, his imperial majesty has come as the conqueror so they say that yeah you know we ain't got no more Christ so his imperial majesty is there so now We've got our crown prince, you know, Hat Ezra Yaakov. And how many other of you here? We are almost like 1,000, you know, almost 1,000, uh -huh. like 900 and something, you know, people. And how do, how do the Jamaican expatriates and the and the Ethiopians here in town interact? Already Haile Selassie has said that we are blood brothers, you know, uh -huh. because he said that we are blood brothers. You know, the Ethiopian, we, we are same, you know. Yeah. So now they see us ju just like we are brothers, you know? Just as the word of His Imperial Majesty. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, all right. What's your name? Wavy 808, you crazy. I wanna jump in with you.
why do Rastafarians wear dreadlocks? First of all, we have to understand that dreadlocks are not unique to Jamaica and Rastafarians. The dreadlock hairstyle originated in Africa and was worn by various tribes there. The earliest tribe this hairstyle can be attributed to is the Masa tribesmen of Kenya. Many of the warriors of this tribe wore this hairstyle. These men sometimes dyed their hair red with root extracts. The dreadlock hairstyle first appeared in Jamaica during the post-emancipation. It was a mean of defiance for ex-slaves to rebel against Eurocentrism that was forced upon them. The hairstyle was originally referred to as a dreadful hairstyle by the Eurocentric Jamaican society. It later evolved to the term now used dreadlocks. Jamaican also used the term Nati dreadlock. Rastafarians grow their hair into dreadlocks because it is part of the Nazarite vow. All Rastafarians take this vow and claim it is commanded by the Bible, Leviticus 21 and 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. Samson is believed to be a Nazarite with dreadlocks. Many Rastafarians believe that like Samson, their hair is their strength and also their weakness if it is cut off. The belief in the weakness of cutting off the dreadlocks was used as a way to intimidate Rastafarians in Jamaica in the past as they would be arrested and their hair cut off. This was one of the reasons why many of the earliest Rastafarians moved to isolated areas, the bush of the island. To many Rastafarians, Dreadlocks also symbolizes the mane of the lion in the Lion of Judah, which is one of the titles given to all Ethiopian kings. Emperor Haile Selassie was also very fond of lions and had them as pets around his palace. The lion is also seen as an animal that is gentle but powerful when provoked. Why do Rastafarians? smoke marijuana. Ganja is considered the wisdom weed by Rastafarians as it is used to help one gain wisdom. Rastafarians use it as part of a religious rite and as a mean of getting closer to their inner spiritual self, Jah, God, and creation. Ganja is also seen by Rastafarians as the herb of life mentioned in the Bible. Rastafarians use ganja is justified by the following Psalms 104 and 14 that says he caused it, the grass to grow for the cattle and the herb for the service of man that he may bring forth food out of the earth. Rastafarians also say it was found growing at the grave of King Solomon in the Bible. Rastafarian consuming through smoking and eating it. The smoking of ganja is part of a religious ritual. When there is a large reasoning gathering of Rastafarians, a chalice, which is a large smoking pipe, may be passed around and smoked. This is similar to the passing around of a communion cup by some Christian denominations. These gatherings are also called Naya Benji. Upon the settings, my brethren, when I say brethren, I mean the brotherhood of man, universally, and the fatherhood of God in man, which is the architect and builder of this universal world that dwelleth between man, woman, and children. We the Ethiopians, they call us Negro, West Indian, and black man, which is so erroneous. 
We are Ethiopians. Mean dark skinned people. Ja, Rastafari. Yeah, the Honorable Marcus Garvey, he was born right here in St. Anne's Bay. Said unto I and I, I and I must look to Africa for I and I redemption when I and I see a king crown. Yes, I and I see His Majesty Emperor Ailis Selassie I, crowned in Ethiopia. The word Ras mean head and Farai mean creator. So see now the Almighty I, I and I are His children and the sheep of His pasture. And I and I use the terms I and I as they say me and you. For I and I got to be one in one love, one aim, one destiny. For only so I and I can fulfill the reality of I and I for the creativity, the Almighty I, Jah, Rastafari. Give thanks, I. Because of law, they charge us for our words, which is our culture. They charge us for the herbs that the Father, the great Jehovah had been created. They charge us also because we as Rastas, Herb is a part of our divine worship. We burn the herbs and it brings us to the remembrance of the crucifixion of our elder brethren. The root sound of reggae has its origin in what is called the Nyabingi. Rasta in the 1930s had already derived their own version of hymns, but had no musical foundation. It was not until Rasta began to attend the ceremony of the Baru people, who had a custom of festive drumming, that the very first Rasta music was created. Today, although the Baru people are gone, the Nyabingi continues in secluded places to avoid police harassment and prosecution.